Hey guys, in this video, let me show you how to create a Spring REST API using Spring Toolsuit, that is using STS. First, for this, let us download Spring Toolsuit from the browser. Go to the browser, search for Spring Toolsuit download or STS download. The Spring Toolsuit is available from Spring.io. Click on the first search result. Scroll down. We need this Spring Tools 4 for Eclipse. My OS is Windows, so let me click on this. Download it in a folder of your choice. Click Save. Now it is getting downloaded. You can also create Spring Boot applications using Eclipse or IntelliJ. But the easiest way to create a REST API in Spring is using Spring Toolsuit. Spring Toolsuit is downloaded. Let me open the folder location. The Spring Toolsuit is a zip file. We need to extract it first. If you notice, the file name is too big. While extracting, this will give an issue. So let me rename it. Function F2. Let me rename it to Spring Toolsuit. Now let me extract it in the same folder location. I don't even have to give the name. Click extract. This will take few minutes to extract. Now the extraction is complete. Let me open this. Here our Spring Toolsuit application is ready. Let me double click on this to open it. Now we are going to create the workspace. We can choose a location of your choice. Let me select it in D drive. I have selected a folder of my choice and click launch. Now my workspace is ready. Let me open it. Okay, so this is how your Spring Toolsuit looks like. We are going to create a REST API using Spring Toolsuit. So for that, we need to use Spring Starter Project. Though it is available over here, create new Spring Starter Project. I will show it to you from the menu bar. Go to File, New, Spring Starter Project. Now we need to give a name for this project. Usually, while working with microservices and Spring applications, developers prefer to use snake case, that is hyphen between the words. Let us give a project name similar to that, spring hyphen boot hyphen basic. Okay, use default location, so the project will be created under YT Spring Demos. Type, what is the project management tool, it is Maven. Packaging should be JAR. Java version is 17. If you are not having 17, please download Java 17. Because the Spring Boot version that we are going to work with is greater than 3.1. Spring Boot version greater than 3 expects Java version 17. The Spring version that we are going to work with is 6. Language is Java. Group ID is com.example. .dast. I prefer to give it like this. DAST refers to the distribution folder. Artifact ID, that is the project name. Description is demo project for Spring Boot. That's okay, you can leave it. Package is com.example. Click next. Now, this is the place from where you can add the dependencies. If you are creating an MVC application, you need to add web dependency. If you are working with a database specific application, then you need to add the appropriate driver. As in, if you are working with MySQL, you need to add MySQL driver plus Spring Data JPA. Or if you are working with JDBC, then Spring JDBC. Like that, you can pick and choose the dependencies that you want by searching it over here. In our case, we are going to create a REST API. So, you need to select Web as Dependency. So, search for Web Dependency. Select Spring Web. Only Spring Web. Guys, if you notice, the Spring Boot version shown here is 3.3.5. Usually, 
This part shows the updated versions of Spring Boot. Let me click on this arrow. There are so many updated versions. That is the snapshot version and M3 version. Always choose the stable version. I prefer to use 3.2.11. One week before, the version that I was using over here was 3.2.10. Now it is updated to 3.2.11. Choose the stable version. Okay. Click next and click finish. Now your application will be created. You can see it in the bottom. I hope you can see it here. Import getting started content. I will open this. It's getting ready. It is done. Let me maximize the screen. Let me open SRC main Java. Here we are having the package com.example within which there is a class which is having public static void main. Let me increase the font size. This class is annotated with at Spring Boot application. This annotation is a combination of three main annotations. One is enable auto configuration, component scan and configuration. What is the purpose of component scan? It is used to scan the packages and identify the classes that are annotated with at component, at service, at repository and so on. What is the use of enable auto configuration? Based on the dependencies that you have added, it will enable the appropriate configuration details. As in, if you have added, then embedded Tomcat server will be automatically added. If you are adding Spring Data JPA to work with the database, then it is ready to work with the inbuilt database H2 database. If you add security as dependency, then it will automatically configure the basic security that is needed for your application and it will provide the generated password. Then, this is about enable auto configuration. The third annotation is add configuration. Add configuration works with Java based configuration to identify the beans that are available in this particular class. I will not go in detail into that. Next, if you are using Maven to create your Spring application, then in that case, you are responsible for creating the IOC container. In this case, who will create the IOC container? This class, if you notice, it is like a simple Java class with public static void main. This class is annotated with at Spring Boot application. This annotation is a combination of enable auto configuration, at component scan and at configuration. What is the use of these three annotations? At component scan, this particular annotation is used to scan the packages for all the classes that are annotated with at component, at service, at repository and so on. At configuration, this is used to identify the methods that are annotated with at B. That should be done only in this particular class. This is just for Java based configuration. As in if you are creating an object of inbuilt class, you cannot use at component annotation. You need to do it over here only. The third one is at enable auto configuration. What is the use of at enable auto configuration? This particular annotation is used to perform certain configurations that are needed for your application. As in, if you are adding Spring Data JPA, it will automatically configure H2 database. If you are adding Spring Web as a dependency, it will automatically configure Tomcat server. If you are adding Spring Security as dependency, it will automatically provide the basic security details. That is, it will generate the password for your application and provide it to you. And in this case, it will also create the IOC container. How is the IOC container created? Within public static void main, if you notice, there is a method spring application dot run. This is a static method. Let me keep the cursor over here. You can see the description which specifies this particular method is responsible for creating an appropriate application context instance. Application context is nothing but the IOC container and it will register a command line property source. If you want to create a standalone application using Spring Toolsuit, then you need to implement command line runner and so on and so forth. So I am not going into that details. Two things that you need to remember is the IOC container will be automatically created by using this method and at Spring Boot application annotation is responsible for scanning the packages and 
providing the configurations that are needed for your application. Okay, all set now. We are going to create a REST API. So, we need to create a class that is annotated with at REST controller. So, let me create it. Select the package. Right click, new class. This should be inside controllers package. Let me give the class name. The class name is greet controller. This class should be annotated with at rest controller. If a class is annotated with at rest controller, it behaves like a rest API. All the rest endpoints that are needed for this application will be available within this class. If a class is annotated with at controller, it behaves like a MVC application. Okay. Within this, let us create a method. This method will behave like a rest endpoint. The access specifier of the method can be public or default. The return type of the method can be anything. As in it can be a string, integer, employee, list of employee, list of string, list of student, demo. Whatever data you want to return from this particular rest endpoint, you can have that as the return type. As of now in our case, let us have the return type as string. Agree? The data that I want to return is have a great day. And now let me give the URL pattern. This method should be annotated with at get mapping. Why get mapping? These methods are accessed by using the HTTP methods. The HTTP methods can be get, put, post, patch, delete options. Based on your requirement, you can use the appropriate method. If you want to create a new resource in the backend, then you can use post mapping. If you want to update, use put mapping. If you want to delete a resource, use delete mapping. In our case, we are just going to return some data. That is the client is requesting some data and we are returning some data. So use get mapping. Okay, let me save this. Okay, now within this, let me give the URL pattern. Slash greet. Let me also add one more method. Public list of string show books return arrays dot as list by passing java angular this method also should be annotated with at get mapping and pass the url pattern slash show hyphen books it is not mandatory that the method name and the url pattern to be same it can be different also so just to show that let me have a different method name here okay. import list the second method is returning a list of string values. Okay. How to call this? What is the default port number in which this particular application is running? It is running in port number 8080. Let us first open pom.xml and check few more things. In pom.xml, here you can see the version of Spring Boot that is 3.2.11. Scroll down. The dependency that we have added is Spring Boot Starter Web. I was talking about the embedded Tomcat server. It is not shown over here. Go to dependency hierarchy. Here you can see that Spring Boot Starter Web is what we have added. If you notice, inside this, you will have your Tomcat server, embedded Tomcat server added. Spring Boot Starter Tomcat. And what is the version of Spring? The Spring version that we are using is 6.1.14. The Spring Boot version is 3.2.11. The spring version that you are using is 6.1.14 and of course the java version is 17. Okay. So Tomcat is added and by default Tomcat runs in port number 8080. If you want to change the port number you can go inside src main resources open application.properties. Here you can just type one property as server.port and change the port number. As of now let us run it in 8080. Let me go to the greet controller. Let me show you the URL. How the rest endpoint will look like. It is http colon slash slash localhost colon 8080 slash greet. Similarly for show books also. Slash show books. Okay. Now let us run this application. 
how can you run this application you can run it as a simple java application or as spring boot app that is select your project right click run as spring boot app you can do this or select your main class right click run as spring boot app see here it is also giving you an option as java application hello hello let me maximize the console here you can see the application has started starting spring boot basic application see the application name that we gave was spring hyphen boot hyphen basic using that name only it is creating the main class name tomcat initialized with port 8080 the tomcat server is started the root web application context also it is started because it is dealing with the controllers part now let us test our application how to test it you can test this application from the browser because this is get mapping but if you are trying to add or update a resource in that case you cannot use the browser you should use postman postman is a tool for testing our rest apis as of now for this application i will use the browser so here let us type it out localhost colon 8080 slash greek enter now here we have got the output for the first rest endpoint the next one is show hyphen books and enter we have got the output let me click on pretty print to show it in json format so this is how you create a rest api using spring tools so